Hello, everybody, and thanks for watching Police Tube. I have an interesting police report uh, that Jeremy DeWitt filed back in November of 2016. It's when he went to Egypt. You know how he said he went to Egypt and yada, 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 whatever he did in Egypt. He went on a, a trip with his wife to Egypt. I have a video on my channel you can check out. It's the picture of Jeremy DeWitt in Egypt. He's riding a camel and wearing a, 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 a khalifa. What, I forget what it's called right now. But this police report was made as soon as Jeremy got back. He called the police department and reported all of his Oakleys have been stolen. <laughs> and his Co Michael Kors watches. Isn't that interesting? And there's no fingerprints. But let me just read this police report to you because it's kind of interesting. On November 12, 2016, approximately 1815 hours, that's 615 in the evening, this officer responded to this address in reference to a burglary. Upon his arrival, I made contact with Jeremy DeWitt, the victim, who stated the following information via verbal and sworn written statements. Jeremy DeWitt stated that on October 23, 2016, he left his house for a trip to Egypt, which lasted three weeks. While he was away, he did not have anyone watching his house located on the street. He arrived home from his vacation on November 12, 2016 at approximately 5.30 in the afternoon. When he entered his house, he observed many items to be out of place or missing. He also observed his, the glass window to the back door of his house to be broken and a red brick to be laying on the kitchen floor among the broken glass. Well, first of all, that sounds exactly like one... Uh, Jeremy would set up, you know, he would leave the red brick lane there as evidence so he can point to it and say, I don't know, maybe uh, it looks like maybe they threw a red brick through the window is probably what Jeremy DeWitt was saying. The police report continues. Jeremy also observed a crack to the front door that he believes may have been caused by someone trying to force entry to the front of his residence. Yeah, because that's what a lot of burglars do. They try to kick your door open. First of all, almost no one robs a house unless it's an inside job. No one's busting into someone's house forcefully unless they've been there before. You know, it's not a random house. So I believe that uh, we kind of know who might have caused this damage and, you know, taken some items like his Rolex, possibly. The police report continues. DeWitt stated that no one had permission to damage his property, enter it, and remove items. The following is a list of items that DeWitt listed as stolen. Are you guys ready for this? Two Apple iBooks that he valued at $3,000. Also, two Apple iMac home computers valued at $2,300. Also, two Sony 40-inch TVs valued at $2,000. So, the, the, so somebody broke in and just wiped him out of all of his used electronics. Also, two Vizio 40-inch TVs valued at $2,000. So, I mean, this was a hard move. They must have had a box truck parked outside and a couple movers that they were paying, probably $50 to $100 an hour to, to uh, you know, move all this stuff out because this is a lot of stuff, all these giant TVs and computers. I wonder if they stole his couches. Let's continue. Six Michael Kors purses valued at $300. So they stole all of uh, Rania's purses. These are all the things that Jeremy values the most in his life. He thinks someone else would uh, break in and steal his wife's purses. I don't think so, Jeremy. One Sony PlayStation 4 valued at $699. I admit I have a PlayStation 4, but and I bought it when it first came out because I wanted to get Grand Theft Auto on it. And uh, that's the only game I, I've played on my PlayStation 4. But even with Grand Theft Auto and a brand new PlayStation 4, uh, like pretty soon after it came out, I didn't pay $699. So I don't know where he got that price. He also had one Microsoft Xbox One valued at $500. So he's, a, he's, at, he, he's adding like taxes and extra uh, surplus handling fees under these, I think. A Bose Home Entertainment System valued at $2,300. So they just wiped him out. This is crazy. No one would carry all this stuff. He's totally lying. 
One Louis Vuitton purse valued at $2,000, plus two diamond wedding rings valued at $3,000, and four Michael Kors watches valued at $1,200, and one pair of Michael Kors sunglasses that were valued at $150, and one pair of Oakley sunglasses valued at $150. Jeremy DeWitt stated that he does not have any serial numbers available for the stolen items at this time, but he probably did say that, you know, I have them in an email. I just have to get it, you know. Uh, DeWitt does desire prosecution in this incident. I, I think the officer miswrote that. Jeremy DeWitt doesn't desire prosecution. Jeremy DeWitt re, uh, re, uh, desires full restitution from his insurance company for all these stolen items. This wasn't even his fault. Anyway, this isn't going to go down without an investigation. It says here that at the scene, the officer attempted to locate latent fingerprints for processing. However, he had negative results locating a usable fingerprint anywhere in the house, even with all this moving that these guys did. Jeremy DeWitt had also cleaned up the house before my arrival. DeWitt was provided a victim's rights pamphlet on the scene. It says that the officer also observed the point of entry and exit as the back door in which a brick was thrown through the window to gain entry. (laughs) There was damage to the front door near the lower door handle as if someone tried to force the door open. It says here, I was able to make contact with a neighbor across the street at 1120 Georgia Boulevard, but they had not seen anyone near the house in a few weeks. I did not observe any outside surveillance cameras in the area. There is no suspect information at this time. No suspect information. All I have to do is read this police report to get some suspect information, you know. I personally think that the suspect and the victim in this case are the same person. Anybody agree? So let's just add this up. We'll ask Siri. Um... Three thousand plus two thousand three hundred plus two thousand plus two thousand plus three hundred plus seven hundred plus five hundred plus two thousand three hundred plus one thousand nine hundred and fifty plus three thousand dollars plus one thousand two hundred dollars plus one hundred and fifty dollars plus one hundred and fifty dollars. Calculating. Here's some information. Total is. $19,550 $19,550 that Jeremy wanted to recover from this. He added up almost $20,000 of stolen merchandise. And all of this stuff is valued at more than the brand new retail purchase price after tax. Like the Sony PlayStation 4 for $700? I don't think so. I mean, let's just get our little Google phones and figure it out. I mean, cost of a PlayStation 4 when released, the introductory price was $399.99. And I remember that. And that's when it was released in 2013. Is that right? The PlayStation 4 came out in 2013? Gosh, that was a long time ago. I'm getting old. Seems like it was just yesterday. But anyway, PlayStation 4 came out in 2013 and brand new. If you bought it the first day it came out, it was about $399. But somehow Jeremy DeWitt had a PlayStation um, that was over three years old. And it was valued at more than double its original purchase price. And you know it was used and scratched up and it even had a Metro State sticker on it probably. Now, even his Xbox One that he values at $500, at least he got that one right. Because the brand new purchase price of an Xbox One is $500. It's actually $499, but that's when it came out brand new in 2013. This is three years later, and three and a half years later, actually. And he's valuing it at the brand new price. He's overvaluing each one of these things, and I doubt that any of them even got stolen because there's nobody on earth that's breaking into someone's home like he's describing, throwing a brick through the window and trying to gain access to a, the front door. Those are just setup things that an insurance scammer would do to make it look like someone had broken into the home because it would have to be pretty obvious because he can't just come home and say, you know, 
all the stuff is gone, he's got to make it look like a crime scene. So he had to set that brick up and also damage his front door, which he probably also got paid for that window and the damage to the front door, which, you know, that was probably a very expensive door and very expensive window, quadruple ply window. And just thinking anybody breaking into a house, you know, your heart is racing when you're breaking into a house. You're sweating. You know, you're not in there relaxing, looking through the fridge and drinking a beer and going to the bathroom like they show on TV. Actually, a lot of home burglaries, the people do use the bathroom, uh, believe it or not. In a lot of home burglaries, um, you know, you start getting really nervous. The thief does, and then you got to pee all of a sudden. And then so they go in and they start using the bathroom. And a lot of burglars have been caught you know, coming in the, coming out of the bathroom and all of a sudden they're surprised. Whoa, the police are here or the homeowners here. I was using the restroom and the homeowners are all always confused. Like, why are you using the restroom? You broke into my house and you're using the restroom. Yeah, it's because they got nervous and they had to go to the bathroom, but nobody's breaking into the house and stealing two Apple iBooks. So that's two laptops and then two uh, two full PC computers. They unhooked all the computers. You know how hard it is to unhook and unplug your computer and then you're carrying it out. So these two Apple iBooks, that's one trip out to the car. Uh, these two Apple home computers, that's three or four trips out to the car because you got to get the, I don't know, maybe let's call it two more trips because you carry one at a time. So you got three trips out to the car now. Two Sony 40-inch TVs. You could carry that by yourself, but that would be two trips out to the car or maybe there was two people breaking into the house, so each one of them was carrying one into, into the TV. You know, that's more likely. Uh, two Vizi, Vizio 40-inch TVs, so that's two more trips out to the car. Six Michael Kors purses, okay, that's in, throw that in a, a garbage bag. A PlayStation 4 and a Microsoft Xbox, so that's one trip out to the car, carrying both of those. A Bose Home Entertainment System, that's a whole trip out to the car, maybe two with all the speakers. Uh, the Louis Vuitton purse, throw that in the garbage bag. Two wedding rings and watches, throw that in the garbage bag. Sunglasses, Oakley sunglasses, throw that in the garbage bag. So he had a garbage bag that he took out to the car. That was one trip. So he's made about 11 trips out to the car. I haven't added all that up, but, you know, I'm just doing it in my mind. It seems like about 11 trips out to the car is what a burglar would have had to do. Or Jeremy would have just uh, packed, uh, pulled up his truck, opened up the back, and just loaded these TVs, the, uh, the, the computers, the bags, all that stuff into the back of the truck and went and did something with it and then reported it all stolen. So this is very suspicious. This seems like fraud right here to me. Alleged fraud. And, you know, I don't think Jeremy would ever do fraud, do you? <laughs> Thanks for watching, Police Tube. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you found this a little bit enlightening. I don't think a lot of people know about this police report or Jeremy's fraud or exactly when he went to Egypt, but now we know it was October 23rd to November 12th, 2016. So anyway, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like my channel, and make sure you leave a comment down below. I want to know what you're thinking right now. Thanks for watching, Police Tube.